This is the results of sea foaming a 2010 V6 RAV4. And that stuff stinks, but it'll get that carbon out. It's got everything smoked up. <clears throat> yeah. Well, anyway, you want to get the carbon built up out of the top of your engine that fuel injector cleaners and things just simply can't get out because it's not actually going through your vacuum lines then I would recommend either buying the Amsoil Power Foam or the Sea Foam and uh, put it through your uh, vacuum lines, your brake booster line, all that stuff. Make sure you get all your vacuum lines. Talk to a mechanic and make sure that you, know, that you don't miss anything and uh, you get that carbon built up off of the build up off of your uh, throttle body in there so that way it'll uh, the throttle body the flap will move better sometimes it gets a little ring of carbon around it and doesn't want to move just like it should um, it's just you know because a lot of that debris and stuff and temperature change and everything outside and moisture builds up uh, if you live like what we do we got salt on the roads all the time that stuff's picking that up through your intake and you know that's the reason why your oil gets dirty because you know it's all that air is coming in there and it's and it's dirty and uh it's uh you know mixing in your engine oil so if you want to try to avoid that then i would recommend just uh going ahead and uh, doing the sea foam make sure you keep your oil changed regularly and um, right here you know i'm just gonna show you that it is my rav4 it's my 2010 traded the 07 and the other videos in on on this one and uh i just wanted to go ahead and do this i bought this car in june this is january so I figured it's never been done. It's got 38,000 miles on it. What's it going to hurt to go ahead and uh, go ahead and put the sea foam in? And I put a little bit in the gas. I put some in the engine here, and uh, you know, try to clean out any carbon build up, any sludge build up that might be in there from the you know drastic temperature changes around here. Like last week, we were eight to ten below zero temperature wise, and then it's like most other people. And then our wind chills was much colder than that. And uh, I'm standing out here now in a t-shirt. And when it's cold, you know, it's in the 30s, but I can handle that compared to being in the negatives. And it does play a big, big uh, factor against your motor oils, all this uh, temperature change and whatnot. It, it, it does affect it. Um, you know, just talk to a, a mechanic, someone that you trust, and, and see what they recommend. I mean, even though you say, well, I'm not having any trouble out of my car, why would I see from it? Well, I would recommend doing it as preventative maintenance because, you know, if you do that ever, let's say, for instance, you see foam or you clean your throttle and your intake, your vacuum lines and whatnot, you clean all that stuff out um, as preventative maintenance and you do it, let's say, every 25,000 miles. Well, you're preventing all that buildup and stuff over the years from getting in, in your intake. And, you know, and also make sure, to let me off the subject a second, make sure you clean your mass airflow sensor. You got to take it somewhere if you don't want to do it yourself, if you don't know what to do. Take it somewhere that you know that um, that's good under the hood and that you can trust and let them do it. And clean clean out inside there where your mass airflow meters are. You see this little little booger right here? Well, if I unplug my car, the car's not going to run. If I unplug that, it's not going to run. It's not going to run right. So, you know, I would recommend just talking to somebody. I'm not saying, yeah, go ahead and do it, or otherwise your car's going to break down. That's not what I'm saying. But, uh, and I've got this stuff here. I spray down inside here. I'll pull this hose here off. Right there where it goes in. You know, right there's your throttle body. There's where your little flapper is, is down in this thing. And it's sideways, and it works, you know, like that. Like, you know. 
<clears throat> try to keep that thing clean. It's not on a cable of any sort where it's uh, driven by an electric motor. It's all drive by wire. So when the car, you know, you try to start it naturally with anything, it's not going to start when you got all this stuff in there. But I sprayed this stuff down in there anyway and uh, tried to clean that flap out. And I let it set for a couple minutes and start it up. Let some of it evaporate because I don't like sucking all that stuff down in there. But uh, it passes right out the exhaust once the car is idle, picks up, it smooths out. You know, and it may smoke for a little bit. And it's neat to watch it smoke. I think it's pretty cool. Some may, some may not. I don't know. But then I'm also running the K&N drop-in in this car. It doesn't help any. It's just the idea that if I forget to check my air filter, I don't have to worry about the K&N. Once I put it in, I don't have to clean it but every so many thousand of miles. You know, and I'm, I 